the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who gave the Paschal Mystery in a covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After a crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them and disturbed that they were teaching the people, proclaiming Jesus resurrected from the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, the leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem, and as the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into the presence and questioned them, by what power, by what name, have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if you are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and in his name this man now stands before you healed. He is the stone, rejected by you, the elders, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There's no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are. To be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to the Psalms, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord, for the Lord is God, and he has given us light. The word of the Lord. This is the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed, he revealed himself in this way, together with Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. They went out and got into a boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So they said to him, Cast the net over to the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the large number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only a hundred yards, dragging the net of fish. When they climbed out of the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish already on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. On this uh, Friday of the octave of Easter, it's good to see you all again and to be in spiritual communion with you. As we hear another um, um, story of Jesus after the resurrection. Again, we are reminded to take all of these into account because this one is from John. We had Luke, we've had Matthew. So we've had different um, people who are recording different stories at different places. And needless to say, they all say the same thing. Jesus is not in the tomb. One of the things that we want to see during this transition now is Jesus rises from the dead and appears to his disciples is that it's going to be a time of preparation, a time of empowering, a time for them to get their act together, to realize what they're dealing with here, a risen Christ, and that they have been given the power and the ministry to act in his name, to build up the church. And so they'll be going to the upper room once again to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. But until then, we want to realize that there are times when we all need to gather. And unfortunately, during this season, in a very special way, we're not going to be at the weddings, we're not gonna be at graduations, we're not gonna have birthday parties, we're not gonna have anniversary parties, ordinations, or anything of that sort. And again, it makes us wonder, you know, how do we deal with these uh, situations that used to bring us so much life, and now we can't even gather for the simplest of celebrations, which we just took for granted. So let us realize that um, despite the intense sadness we feel, um, that there is still a lesson to be learned here and something that we need to prepare ourselves for. And again, uh, the need to evangelize still goes on. So even though we're not gonna be gathering with family as often as we'd like or in large numbers, especially during this season, um, we wanna realize that, well, maybe the Lord is preparing us or something in the upper room. What could that be? First of all, we see um, in this story about fishing, 
It's an everyday story of what the disciples always did in their lives. And today was nothing different. So even after the resurrection, a lot of people returned to their former way of life. And of course, the apostles, being fishermen, um, were on um, the patrol of the ocean or the, um, the Sea of Galilee at the time, and again, trying to catch fish. One of the things that they were not able to do is catch fish at night, which is a very unusual circumstance because they're usually very uh, biting and they're very um, tempting to take the hook at night. So it's a wonderful time to fish. But at the same time, um, the apostles have been there at it all night and they've caught nothing. It's only at the word of Jesus. It's only his spoken word that after he tells them to cast the net over here, because he sees something they do not see, that they're able to haul in every kind of fish that the sea holds, 153 different varieties of fish. And again, this shows that Jesus is Lord of all creation, that he made all the seas and the, and the fish within it. And again, he has dominion over them. And so inviting the disciples to be a part of that, he invites them to be a part of his creation. And now the creation is turning to a post-resurrection type of creation, a new creation, creation of the church. So yes, they're going to become apostles of men. And again, even in our every ordinary day lives, even though we might not be fishermen, when we go back to our ordinary ways of life, it is during those times that we have to realize that Jesus speaks to us in special ways. And we need to listen so that we hear his voice and catch what he wants us to catch, especially through his word and his uh, directions that we will know uh, and be blessed. That's the important thing, that we be blessed and only he can bless us. So listening to his voice is gonna be very, very important. So again, uh, as we see the early church, uh, beginning to grow under Peter and John, and, and we see that the um, Sadducees and, the, and all the upper class of the ruling parties were out to see what this new phenomenon was in the town that everybody was talking about. Who is this that's now walking around that has been healed, and how was he healed, and who did it? And so Peter and John are arrested and again uh, brought before the tribunal to see if they can give witness to what they've done. And the only witness they give is to give God the glory. They didn't say they did it. They said it was the name of Jesus. As I said yesterday, it's such a powerful word that we should always use it in a prayerful way and as a blessing. And this is how this man was healed, through the name of Jesus the Nazarene. So when I do healing masses, and again, um, opportunities for us to um, try to focus on healing in a special way because we're so distracted throughout the day and have many concerns. But in the healing mass, which could be any mass, but at the same time there are special masses we have to help support physical, emotional, and spiritual healing, we um, gather to focus in on that name. We focus on its power. Jesus was able to heal, not only by touch, not only by uh, command, he could do it long distance. And he didn't have to be in the Rome or the centurion. He could heal from many miles away. And as we feel distant today from Jesus, let us know that all we need to do is call upon his name. This is how the healing takes place. This is how the transformation of souls and lives, physical lives that have been imprisoned by any number of means, can again be freed as they were to be able to go out and proclaim Jesus is Lord. Let's ask God to give us that courage and the fortitude to be able to do just that, to go out in these dark times and realize that even though there are people who are trying to close the church, or maybe physical uh, illness is closing down the church or separation, that we too still have the means within us by proclaiming Jesus is Lord be able to go out and minister from where we are, whether it be at home or whether it be outside or whether it be at work, but it might be is our word calling Jesus by name to help people be encountered. 
So let us words, let our words and deeds mean something. Let us see our words and deeds be blessed. And holding Jesus' name in a reverent way and using it with all its power and the spirit behind us that we too will see how God is still present to us in these dark times. Let's allow you, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, which earth is given in human hands and made to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, the God. By the sprinkling of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Before I forget, um, let's do our prayers of intercession. Gathered as one people, we place our needs and desires before God our Father. We pray for Pope Francis and all, and in his role of holding the chair, Peter. May Jesus strengthen him with power and continue to flow through him in his ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all those who are appointed as civic authorities, may God give them wisdom in working with humility and steadfastness for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all those who suffer from disabilities, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, may God's grace shine through to them abundantly, and may we pray for their healing in the name and the power of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all of us on our Easter journey, may God's revelation of life conquering death continue to help us grow in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also now for the faithful who have died, especially during the season of the virus, all the loved ones who are suffering may God may they praise God in the company of all the angels in heaven and may they be consoled by the communion of saints we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer today's mass on Friday is being offered for the intentions of Ethan Simino we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer Almighty and ever powerful God you showed us the way to salvation through your Holy Son Hear and answer our prayers we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, my friends, pray that my offering and yours will become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that duty in our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, especially during this season, to love you yet more gloriously. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. So now with all the angels in heaven, we too join in endless song of praise as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, and be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us in this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered in his love. And as when, as when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify the gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice, my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, the Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have now seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. So look with favor upon the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us now in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, all the bishops, the priests, and the deacons, and the entire people that you have gained for yourself, as we walk the ways of faith and hope, that we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Permit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints. Together we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. One. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. The intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we most humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. The Lord, uh, the Lord calls us once again uh, during this week uh, to be prepared for his divine mercy on Sunday. So again, I hope you're doing the novena or some prayers in relationship to the divine mercy. And until we meet again, may God bless you. Please make it a good day. Thank you.